Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for joining in. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Today we've got a special guest with us. We've got Mark Gordon, who is a relationship coach um, and he's an expert. So we are going to be talking about why relationships matter. I'm Fatima. Hi, I'm John. Excellent. So Mark has been involved in faith, business, and community leadership, family coaching, and a keynote speaker for more than 30 years. His passion for people is evident, whether speaking, writing, or coaching. He is passionate to inspire and empower people, families, and organizations to become relationally, emotionally, spiritually healthy. He has recently released a book called Relationship Matters. He has recently, sorry, I don't need to repeat the same line, okay. Uh, so the book is an essential blueprint to building strong families and fostering healthy relationship. However, Mark says, my greatest accomplishment is my family, being married to my amazing wife, Sandy, for 39 years. I am blessed to have three amazing children who married three more amazing people. And of course, my greatest joy of my two grandchildren. Currently, Mark is a CEO of Mark Gordon Enterprises, speaker, author, and leadership coach, keynote speaker on a variety of topics to do with building healthy relationships for families and organizations, facilitator of multiple workshops, including Relationship Matters, Strength-Based Parenting, Understanding Anger, Shadow Boxing, Dealing with Shame, and Strength-Based Leadership and Others. Let's bring on Mark. So we have Mark coming on. Yes, me. I'm here. I'm here. Yay. <laughs> Hello, Mark. Thank you for yeah. joining us. Hi. Thank you. It's awesome, so good awesome. to be with you. And I love the healthy way vibes. So we, we got to, this is an honor to be uh, on here with you. So glad you have yeah. me here. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you do what you do and what really, how does it benefit others? Well, I'm, you know, I was, um, I grew up in a very uh, strict and, and ho a home with a lot of anger, a lot of, um, you know, unhealthy discipline, I guess, if you would. And I rebelled against that. And I, and I found myself in addiction, found myself broken. And in my healing journey, I discovered that one of the main reasons why was that uh, it was that I didn't know how to have relationships. I didn't know how to relate to people. And as a result of my childhood, as a result of the way I grew up, I just didn't know how to relate to people. And I started tracing back my, my roots as to why I did the things I did and realized that I didn't have a healthy relationship with myself. And so I started to kind of look into that and started to grow in that. And in, during my healing journey is when I discovered the value of uh, of having good and healthy relationships in my life. You know, I often say relationships can be the most uh, hurtful thing, but also the greatest joy at the same time. And so it, uh, it behooves us to actually learn how to intentionally build healthy relationships. So that's kind of, I guess, uh, as an outflow of my work through the years and my own healing journey, uh, I just started to do that. A few years ago, I felt on my heart to write a book about it. To, I, have, I teach workshops and whatnot in, in uh, recovery places, the people in recovery, talking about how to build healthy relationships. Because, of course, through addiction, relationships are wiped out. And so uh, they kept telling me, you got to put this in a book. You got to put this in a book. And I thought, well, who's, I'd walk into chapters. It's like, well, who would read a book? <laughs> you know, there's so many books. But at the uh, one day after a class, one of the students came up to me and said, you know, if you've been given such a gift like this, you really have an obligation to share it. <laughs> it's like womp right in the heart. And so, uh, and so that's what I did. I, I, I started penning it down. Thank goodness for editors and uh, whatnot because of my addiction, I didn't finish education. And so I didn't think I was smart enough to write a book and we've released it. And it's been an incredible opportunity and incredible release. I've been getting feedback. That's, it's really helped change people's lives. It's a very simple read, but it has profound uh, 
principles in it that if you adopt, you can win. So that's why I do what I do. I just have a passion to see family, especially coming out of COVID. They're, they're like, I, you know, a lot of people call COVID many names. I called it the great revealer. It mm -hmm. kind of revealed what was under the surface. And I think a lot of people that had stress in their relationships already, it kind of, the crack showed. And mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that, yeah, it just kind of like blew it apart. And so I realized, wow, you know, this is a great opportunity because people are realizing and coming to know like how important relationships are, how important it is to nurture them and be intentional with them. That's the problem. We, a lot of times we go through life just kind of, you know, taking relationships for granted. We, maybe we don't think about them as, as something that we need to nurture and, and work on. And uh, uh, starting with ourselves, you know, I always say there's three primary relationships in every person's life. One is with the creator, one's with ourselves, ones with others. <laughs> and if and if we don't get those in the right order and we don't have a good relationship with ourselves, it's really hard to have healthy relationships with others. And I think part of that journey was for me was just to discover, you know what, I did have value. I I do have something to offer others. I I it it actually humbled me. It didn't make me proud. I always say pride puffs up or it covers up. And in my case, for many years, I covered up. I tried to be something I wasn't just to impress people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so uh, I realized that actually true humility is accepting who I am for who I am and mm -hmm. not trying to paint it up, <laughs> just mm -hmm. be myself. And so that's kind of, that was a big help for me. So the people that come see you or the people that you work with um, that you help are they from all different ages, or do you kind of focus on on a certain? Um... Yeah, I you know I I find myself um, with uh, first of all you know the people that come to me are generally all word of mouth. I don't do a lot of marketing. I do a lot of guest spots like this, and I have my own podcast, and I certainly do the workshops. And I guess maybe just because of that, they get to know my heart, they trust me, so I'll get calls and everything. But yeah, I, I've had everything from like couples that are in, in crisis, families that are in crisis. I've done a lot of family coaching. I, I really believe in a holistic approach to, to look at the whole family and include them in the, in the process because I believe that every family should have a healthy relational culture within their home. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to include the whole family. Um, I also do a lot of work with people that are coming out of addictions and need to be rebuilt their relationship with themselves. <laughs> and so I, I, I find clients that way. And then the last group is, which was a surprise to me was leaders. There are a lot of leaders who present very healthy at work and they might be great bosses or they might be, um, you know, they might be very successful. Let's put it that way in business, but within themselves and within their own personal relationships, there's crisis all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it, it, the two can't be separated. I know a lot of people try to, they try to compartmentalize, but let me tell you, when, when, when you're struggling internally, it comes out everywhere that you go. Mm -hmm. And so in the same way, if you're doing well in a healthy relationship with yourself, it'll actually come out everywhere you go as well. So mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. I like how you said that we have like three relationships that we have to mm -hmm. foster. One is with the creator, one is with ourselves, and one is with everyone else. Right. And so, and a lot of times people often forget that they'll either, you know, they'll e either have that relationship with creator and relationship with others and then forget about themselves, mm -hmm. which I think is probably the most important right. one right then only can we have the other two relationships right. like build that strong relationship with the others and so do you have like do you have a system that you work with like i know you were mentioning something about five pillars yeah well i i use the example in the book the book's built on a, on that syllabus that if you want a strong house uh you need a healthy foundation good framework and a sturdy roof you have those three things, everything else is kind of decoration or room division, but it'll stand in the test of storms. It'll stand in the test of time. And so in the same way in your relationships, if you're in your home, if you're in your family or your organization, you need to have a healthy foundation, strong framework. How are we going to work with 
relate to each other, and a sturdy roof. Who have I invited into my life to speak into my life? That each person that I ask to do that is a shingle in the roof that provides protection for my family, for my relationships. And so by people engaging me, for example, having a coach, that coach becomes a shingle in the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be a, a faith leader. It might be, uh, you know, just uh, uh, friends that you've said, listen, I want to have healthy relationships. If you see something in me, <laughs> that's a little off. I want you to tell me. Accountability is so important. But the the five pillars is the healthy foundation. And that's what I, I do a lot of teaching on. And, and so the system is this. The first pillar is trust. It's a cornerstone pillar, right? It holds the weight of the relationship up. And so if we don't have trust, we're not going to have a very healthy relationship. And so how do you build trust? I say you got to make investments. You got to, uh, you know, if you think of a bank, you have equity when you owe, the equity is the, you know, the amount you have less the amount you owe. The in part is the equity. Well, in relationships and in trust, particularly, it's the same thing. Your trust equity needs to be invested in. You need to do things intentionally to build trust equity. Again, a lot of times we take our relationships for granted. We don't really think about it in those terms. But if you are intentionally building trust equity, you are actually creating intimacy. You're, you're creating closeness. I always say uh, there's kind of three components of building trust. One is, uh, is transparency. And if you take the word intimacy, if you want intimate connection, like I'm talking about emotional intimacy, not, not uh, physical intimacy, although that follows if it's a marriage, but it's the, it's the emotional intimacy. If you want connection with somebody, you need transparency. And I, I, trans, I slow that word down, intimacy, into me you see. So when, when if, you, if I'm transparent, I'm, I, every hidden thing erodes trust. So if I want to build a strong trust pillar, I need to let people see my heart. I need to let the people closest to me see my heart and know who I am. The second one in that is loyalty. Uh, boy, loyalty is a lost art in our society today. And the first person you need to be loyal to is yourself. <laughs> we, you know, so loyalty is not uh, you know, being a doormat. Loyalty is being a loyal person because it's written in my heart. It's written in, it's who I am. And so because I'm a loyal person, I've been married 39 years, my wife can trust me because mm -hmm. I have been shown loyalty to her for 39 years. And that's why, by the way, in fidelity, uh, you, know, um, you know, when uh, you hear the term work widows, uh, when somebody throws themselves completely in, the, that loyalty is breached, then the trust pillar is not there. So loyalty is so important. It's so important for our children to see us being loyal, not just bailing you know, going from here to here because somebody offended us or hurt our feelings. The third one is keeping promises. You know, mean what you say, say what you mean. When you keep promises, you build trust equity. So those are just three simple things to remember in, in like when somebody says, well, how do I build trust equity? Well, there's your deposits, mm -hmm. right? You, you, you're transparent. You're, you're being open with yourself. You're loyal. You're, 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 you're doing, and then you're keeping promises. You're doing what you say you'll do. Those things build that trust equity. And when that's strong, boy, it can hold a lot of weight. The storms can come and it's going to stand the test of time. The mm -hmm. other thing is sometimes I, you know, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I make withdrawals, but the key is, is that I've got to make more deposits than I do withdrawals. Mm -hmm. And when you don't think about it, you're not intentional. You tend to make a lot of withdrawals without even knowing it. Right. We all do that. Right. You know, going back to like the, the relationships, I think what it is, is, you know, when we meet new people, we meet friends or even friends that we've, had, we've met since we were kids. We sometimes we, we take a lot of it for granted because we bank on it. We think that they're always yeah. going to be around. Right. But like you mentioned, we're always having to work at it. We have to feed. We have to feed it. We have yes. to feed it just like a child grows. Relationship needs to grow because you feed into it. That's right. And if, if, if it gets broken or if it gets like the trust is, is, is broken, you need to even put it in the bank even more right? yes. to, get it, to get the deposit back up. Cause there should be that foundation. Like you're saying, like, yeah. what is that level? If it dips below, you need to work at it. If it's above, it's going right. great. Um, but it's also balanced cause you can't, you can't um, exert yourself so much that you're, you're right. drained all the time too. Exactly. And I think that part of the, the transparency and the, and, and the loyalty to yourself part will help you not do that. Self-care is important. 
And I don't think a partner or, or somebody that's close to you would not, would, would, you know, would uh, resent that if you had some self-care. It's when we're selfish. <laughs> it's, when, it's when it's all about us that we, and we don't consider the other person. And that's when it becomes unhealthy. And so, you know, the, the other issue, the other thing is, is like the, 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 the bunch of little investments make a huge difference more than the big investments do sometimes. And, and so it's just being conscious of that. The other thing that came to mind while you said that, uh, John, was that, that sometimes um, we will have a fight or an argument or we'll, we'll say something or hurt each other's feelings or be offended in some way. And then we kind of just let time take care of it. So we don't ever actually go back and fix that or, or take responsibility. And we just let it kind of ride out. And then that kind of goes into the bedrock, the foundation of your relationship. Now you carry along a bit and everything's fine. And then you get to another bump. And again, you argue, you fight, but you never work it through. You just kind of, for, you know, move on again. And that goes into the bedrock and eventually that will break the whole foundation down. So you need to go back and deal with it. So when you've made a withdrawal of trust by being curt or rude or, or, or not following through, saying you'll be home for supper and you don't show up till eight o'clock without a call, any little things that you might do, because life happens, don't just leave it hanging in the air. Go back and make it right. Take responsibility. I tell people all the time, the two things that helped me grow the most was the two sides of the same coin. I started taking responsibility for my actions, for my behaviors, for what I did. And I stopped taking responsibility for other people's reactions and, mm-hmm. and, and what they did. And when I did that, it, it, it allowed me to take, I didn't have to get defensive anymore. I could take, you know what? Yes, I said I would be home at six and I wasn't. I am so sorry. I, I, I take responsibility. And taking responsibility isn't just saying sorry for doing it. Taking responsibility is I will be home next time at six when I say I'll be home at six. That's taking responsibility. And so when I did that, I was, I'm clear. But then let's say my wife doesn't forgive me on that. Maybe she doesn't, she was really offended by it and she's still holding it against me, even though I've taken responsibility and corrected it. I would take responsibility for her inability to receive it and I'd get defensive and angry at her. Now, I, when I let go of taking a responsibility for the way she was feeling, I was in a better position to be able to say to her, you know what, uh, honey, I'm sorry that you're, you're hurt. I'm sorry I sent that relational message. I'm here when you're ready to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You see, as long as I took responsibility for her feelings, I was actually then having to try and change her. <laughs> feelings and you can't do that you have to you have to just take responsibility for your part and then be there for them and that builds trust equity so don't let a lot of time and space go between offenses between uh between hurts you want to go and fix them whether it's a friend a co-worker or a spouse you you know the closer the relationship the more important it is to give it that attention Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good points good points i can vote for that for (laughs) My wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yes, you both have been happily married for a very long time. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we've been together for a long time. Probably we, my wife and I, have been together as almost longer than you and your wife have been married. Wow. So, but we we we've been married for for oh my geez, 20, 20 years, yeah. almost twenty years. But you know that's it. That's super important. Is that you? You've heard the saying, you know, don't go to bed angry. And I yeah. think that's that's with everything. It's not just the people you live with in your house, yeah. but it's you know people uh, outside of the of the four walls, four walls and the roof, right? And yeah. so, what would you um, what do you what do you find right now? I mean, like after the last you know a couple of years, a mm-hmm. lot of lot of um, uncertainty, a lot of things have come out. Have you seen a big surge in in a certain thing that you're helping people go through, or is it just still the same thing, but just it's been magnified because of? Well, the there's been a bit of, <clears throat> certainly a bit of man- magnification, but I also think, um, how do I word this? I want to put it uh, in the right way. People, people who have gone through stress and crisis look for comfort. They look for a way of, of appeasing themselves, of, of bringing peace or, or comfort to themselves because they're, they've been stressed out. Because they were stressed out, locked up in a home with 
a family, they look outside that family for the comfort instead of looking to the family for comfort. And that's, I've seen an elevation of that where uh, infidelity is on the rise. Um, I, I've seen, uh, and, and the, prof- you know, the stats say that too, there, the divorce rate's gone up. And, and, and it boils down to this. When we look for comfort outside of our family, outside of ourselves and outside of our family, we are actually asking for a recipe for disaster because the greatest thing that we want to do for each other in our relationships, my wife feels fulfilled and feels excited when I go to her for comfort. She feels like we're connected more because I've gone to her for comfort. I lament to her and tell her how my day was, how, you know, whatever. And I know, you know, the typical thing, guys don't do that. They don't, they're not in touch with their feelings, but, but guys, we need to learn how to, you can learn it. You, you may not be natural for you, may, depending on the way you were raised, but you can learn empathy. You can learn caring and you can learn asking for help. <laughs> and, and so when I tell my wife I'm having a bad day and I need help, she doesn't have a bunch of answers for me, but her acknowledging the way I'm feeling, the way I'm, the, the way I'm, um, I'm in that moment it makes me feel loved and, and cared for, but it also makes her feel loved and cared for because our trust equity goes up because she knows I trust her. Mm-hmm. And so the, that's a thing I've seen in, in this day and age right now is that people are going outside themselves for comfort, whether it's online, whether it's in person, whether it's uh, you know drinking or drugs or whatever it is, people are fi- trying to find the comfort or the relief, if you will, from the stress in places that are not designed to actually help, they make it worse. Mm. You know, we can go to our creator for help. We can go to a friend for help. We can go to our spouse for help. Let's keep it internal. And, and that way we can actually grow from it and we can grow in connection in our relationships from it. We grow in relationship with ourselves through it because I've actually when I, when, I co- when I do that and I go through a stressful se- season and I come out the other end, I look back and I say, wow, like I have grown so much through that season. You know, a lot of people say troubles, uh, you know, cr- uh, builds character. I don't agree with that. I think trouble exposes character so I know where to work. <laughs> and so now I can actually work on that area in my life. And, and so... Uh, I believe that this is an opportunity for people if they if they want to live the healthy way and they want to have that healthy way in their life and their healthy in their relationships uh, learn find a way to actually find comfort within the family within the uh, close relationships that you do have it's interesting that you say all of that um, I was on a a workshop earlier today and I think you were there as well mark. <laughs> Um, so one of the things that actually stuck out to me and is sort of what you're saying is when we do turn to our partner to trust or our family members or our friends, we're actually giving them a gift of, yes. um, you know, being able to be there and vice versa. And so that was something that kind of stuck with yeah. me quite a bit was the fact that even with, you know, a compliment, we take, we, it's so hard for us to take a compliment. And that goes with, you know, being able to trust our partners, our friends, our coworkers, our colleagues enough to have that conversation or that, that trust level. Um, So it is actually, it it is a gift um, to be able to trust. Absolutely. It is a wonderful gift and it, it produces more. (laughs) That's the beauty. It it multiplies. It, It multiplies when you actually intentionally do that and receive it. And, and you're absolutely right. When we, re- when we re- think of it this way, when we reject the gift, we reject the person. So if somebody is trying to compliment us or, you know, be kind to us in a, in, that we're in relationship with, and we reject that, they don't think that you rejected the gift. They think you rejected them. Mm-hmm. And then that creates a wedge in their heart. And it may not be verbalized in that moment, but it's there. And if it hasn't been corrected, it's going to grow. <laughs> yeah, it so, goes back to that rock in the foundation is what is yes. that foundation made up of? Good intentions and trust or right. bulky bricks? Yeah. And that's another thing I've had people tell me, well, I've done that. Uh, you know, I've, I've, 
I have tried to share and ask for help and it's used against me or it's, you know, well, that if somebody takes a, a, a care of, you know, loves you and cares for you, they won't do that. If, if they're doing something, there's a cause and effect that has nothing to do with you. It's something about them. And so it just points to you and shows you. I always say every conflict is an invitation to go deeper. So every time there's opposition, it's an invitation to go deeper and to get to know yourself and to get to know your partner or others in, that you work with. And so I think that, that if it is being used against you, that is an indicator. It's a sign that you need, there's some more work to be done on that relationship. Mm -hmm. And if it's a relationship worth investing in, then I would get right on it. If it's a relationship that you don't have to invest in, then I would put a boundary up and protect your heart. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's, uh, you know, I could talk about that for another half hour, but I won't. <laughs> well, speaking of, um, yeah. <laughs> we've actually come to our time. It, there's been so many points and so many learning opportunities. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you. Um, it's been great so to be here. how can people reach you or, and if you have anything that they can take away? Yeah. Well, the, they can reach me at markgordon.ca. So my name and .ca, and that's my website. And uh, for everybody's knowledge, on my website, if they do the click down menu, they'll see a free assessment. And I am a blind spot, certified blind spot navigator. And a lot of times relationships struggle because of blind spots we have, right? They're blind spots because we don't see it. We don't know <laughs> what we don't know. And so you can actually, it's a three minute test and you can take that and it'll give you the results and I'll follow up with you for free and you get a free session to break down those results. And so you can actually see what your personality style is, what blind spots come with that, and then what some relational tips are to be to be cautious about to look for. The great thing is if you actually do are married or have a partner, do it, both of you do it, and mm -hmm. it's going to give you understanding and insight into yourselves. And so uh, there's a free gift for everybody. If you can, you can go on my website, markgordon.ca, hit that blind spot assessment, it's three minutes. It'll send email you the results and it's very comprehensive results. And then I will follow up with an email after offering you a free get to like to break down the results with you. And it's no yeah. charge for that. Excellent. Thank you. I've actually done the test a couple of times. It's, it's a lot of fun to do the test. So yeah. if you haven't, I definitely encourage everyone do to, do <laughs> to, do the t uh, to do the test. And so again, thank you, Mark, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, you will be able to see all of his um, postings. You'll see his um, where you can actually reach him on our post. For those of you who are not following, please do follow us. We are the Healthy Way Vibes on everything. Upcoming next, we've got next week on the 13th, we've got Rishma D Dala coming in. No stranger to the Healthy Way Vibes. She's actually going to be talking about the nervous system and the connection between gut mind as well. Then on the, the 19th, Wednesday, the 19th, we've got Dr. Teresa coming in and hopefully she's okay from the hurricane, but mm -hmm. we have her scheduled and she's going to be talking about breast health. Then on uh, the 20th. So again, these are no strangers to the healthy way vibes. We've had them on a few times. We've got Sue Ward coming back and she's gonna be talking about how to enjoy the holidays without going overboard. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful day. Bye for now.